Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Thursday 10 a.m. technique at the Christmas Movie Marathon Online Crop. And today we're going to be making a clutch gift box. And um, we're going to be using the featured collection for the month of October from the Close to My Heart September October catalog. And that is this beautiful collection called Home for Christmas. It has beautiful reds and greens and browns and grays and black in it. And it is really stunning and gorgeous for all your Christmas crafting stuff. So we're going to be using some pattern paper from that. But we're also going to be using a stamp set. And let me see if I can find it. I forgot to mark it ahead of time. And it's in the back amongst all these good things. Oh, let me see. Almost there. Yes, here we go. It is the Holiday Banner Stamp Set. And so we're going to be using that as well. So this is going to be a little bit different. It's not a card or a layout. It is a clutch gift box. And so, you know, we're doing Christmas movies. And one of the things that happens in Christmas movies and during the Christmas season is that we tend to give gifts. And so I thought it would be fun to do a little crafty gift box today. Good morning, Mary. If you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're joining me later, you can just say replay so I know who stopped by. And good morning, Joanne. Good morning, Laura. Nice to see you're watching. The, the pattern paper that I'm going to be using for this particular project is actually a bulk paper. And um, usually after the season, the after the catalog is done, the bulk paper becomes available for everyone to purchase. Before that, it's just uh, makers, close to my heart makers, that can purchase it. But it's also the paper that comes in the uh, card making workshop kit for the collection. So these two patterns are in the paper pack. They're just not back to back. And so they take two patterns that they love and stick them back to back. And that is the bulk paper. So I'm going to be using the bulk paper for this project today. But you can use any paper you wish. I love this plaid that's on this side of the paper. The back side is this other gorgeous um, paper with pine in different shades. And it's very distressed looking and really sort of vintagey and fun. And so we're going to be starting with the plaid side because that's what I want to be on the outside of my clutch gift box. And we're going to start out with doing some scoring first. So I'm going to use my Versamat along with my ruler and my bone folder. The first thing that I need to do is I need to score at five inches here. So I'm going to come from top to bottom all the way through. And we're using, yes, a full 12 inch sheet of paper. So we're going to be scoring all the way from top to bottom at five inches. Now, to score the next line, we could turn our page around and score again at five, or we can just move over to the seven inch line. So let's score along seven inches like that. And we've created two score lines at five and seven along our 12 inch piece of paper. Now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees so that our score lines are now going horizontally. And I'm going to score it at three inches. So line up your ruler three inches all the way across the Versamat and score at three inches. And then we're going to repeat the same thing on this side. So we're going to come in three inches, which means we're scoring at the nine inch line like that. And that is super simple and easy, isn't it? We've done four score lines, and that's all the score lines we need to make. <laughs> so we did two that were five inches in from the edge, and then we did two that were three inches in from the edge the other way. So we've got this long, skinny rectangle marked off in the center of our paper. Okay, 
Now, because we've scored this on the side that we want to the outside of the box, this means we've got our dip of our score line on this side and our bump is on this side. And we always fold with the bump side to the inside. So let's go ahead and we're going to fold on all the score lines. We're going to make sure that our edges line up because didn't use a scoreboard. Don't those two patterns look gorgeous together? Lovely, lovely. And then we're going to score on the other score line. Right there. If you ever have trouble with finding your score line, um, I, I sometimes do because I score on a flat surface. I'm not scoring on a scoreboard where there's a literal gully underneath. So it doesn't make as much of a score line as you would in a scoreboard. So if you ever have trouble with it, my advice is to take your paper and fold it and then slowly squish down as you roll it. And then it'll automatically pop at when it hits the score line. But then before we um, push it down all the way, just make sure that we're lined up at the top and the bottom with the other side of our piece of paper. Okay, and then we're going to do our last score line on this side. So again, you just kind of squish as you're going down and roll and it will pop when it hits that score line. The paper knows it's there, so you just trust your paper. Paper has a memory, which is why scoring and folding and all those interactive cards work so well, because paper's got a memory. It remembers once you folded it one way. <laughs> and if you've ever folded something the wrong way, you will really recognize that, because once it's folded, it's folded. Okay, so now if we kind of squinch it up like this, you can see that little rectangle in the bottom, and we've got our all of our sides. Now, at this top right-hand corner of this rectangle that's in the center, we are going to take the corner of this score line. See this? Oh, it continues all the way up here. This point here, we're going to take this score point and we're going to fold it, giving a little push above the corner, and we're going to fold it till this point meets, meets the edge. So you see how I'm kind of, let me scooch it down a bit. I'm kind of putting my hand on this part here to hold it down, pushing my thumb into that score line point, making sure that this little point where those two score lines intersect stays put. And then I'm just going to run it up like this until that score line is running parallel with the edge of this fold here. Okay, so let me lift it up this way so you can see. So we're kind of doing like a hospital corner if you've ever made a bed. So we've got our intersection, we've got the top, the end of that score line where we put our thumb, and then we push it all the way till it meets the edge. And then what we want to do is make sure that that stays lined up, like so. And then we're just going to crease down that angle. Okay, I'm going to spin it around here for a second because I'm going to come in with my bone folder and just crease that angle down. Okay. So now that's what it looks like from the outside. We've got our little angle all creased down. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to make sure that this intersection stays put. So this is the top left corner of that inside long skinny rectangle. We're going to keep our finger there. We are going to lift this up. Maybe we'll put our thumb there. <laughs> We're going to push our thumb into the crease and use our other finger to pull this edge down. And then we're going to lift. We're going to push up like that, kind of rock it up so that it lines up. Same as the other side. We're going to line it up with that folded edge of this part. So we're grabbing, we're pushing and we're folding, we're doing everything simultaneously. And make sure it lines up, and then we can crease down 
that angled part on the inside right there little angle I know it's hard with the camera to see all the things that I'm doing but we're creating that little angle okay so now we've taken those two top crease lines and we've pushed them down like so creating a nice little wall on the end now we're going to repeat the same thing with the other side so let's turn this around okay we kind of open those back up so they're not in our way and we're going to um, put our thumb in that crease right there at the top. We're going to grab with our finger here, pull down this part, and push up like that. Oops, we're not quite at the intersection. There we go. This one's, this one's not cooperating. <laughs> so push down, lift up. And then rock it all the way down. I'm going to turn it this way to make sure that that little crease, sometimes you have to massage that little point at the bottom. So it's now lined up. And then we can crease down this little angle right there. This is where you hope you're an octopus, so you have lots of fingers to, to do this with. And we'll give it a nice good crease with the bone folder. And then we're going to do our last corner. So now we've got this last corner to do, top of this inside rectangle. We're gonna put our thumb in the crease at the edge. We're gonna grab this part of the paper and pull it towards the center and then push our thumb up, rocking it till it hits right along the edge of that folded piece. And then we can Crease down the angle inside that's created. Lower it down here so you can see on the camera. <laughs> Crease that down. Give it an extra with the bone folder. The uh, pattern paper is a nice weight and it really works well for doing this. You don't always have to use cardstock for creating dimensional objects because the, the pattern paper is such a good weight. Okay? So now, if we kind of squinch all this together, you can kind of hold it up at the top. We fold those two sides in. You can see we've kind of made like a long, skinny little box with really high sides, okay? So what we wanna do is on one of these sides, we want to fold these, this section here that's above our little rectangle box down to the inside. So we're gonna make a crease line all the way across, nice and straight, okay? So this will be hard for you to see. Let me see if I can get any kind of a decent angle it's because this top wants to fold in and then you won't see what I'm doing. But I'm going to make a crease line all the way across. So I'm just lifting up this whole tab. There we go, maybe that'll help. Lifting up this whole tab and folding it to the inside. I'm not even scoring it first. I'm just gonna fold it over until it hits that edge of the rectangle and kind of just sort of push it down for now. And then we can lift it up and take a look. And yes, that looks nice. It lines up very nicely. So we can go ahead and crease that down. And you're gonna have to crease it good because you've now got one, two, three layers of cardstock there. <laughs> so there, if looking at the front, that's what you're going to see. And then the other side, we're gonna do it, we're gonna treat it a little bit differently. So let's squinch it up like that. So we've got our little box and we've got those uh, that flap sticking up. But this time, instead of folding it down flat, we're gonna fold this corner in and this corner in. So I'm gonna lay it, I'm gonna turn it around because it's easier for me to work this way instead of reaching over top of the box. So what we wanna do is we wanna keep this box down flat so it's not bulging up like that. So use your extra fingers to kinda of hold the box down. Then we're gonna take this point and we're going to fold it over at a 45 degree angle until it meets the top edge of the box. Now it won't come to the center, it's just going to create a nice little angle. Okay, and we're going to push it down 
and then we'll go in with the bone folder and then I'll lift it up here so you can see. So we have folded this corner down just until it meets that inside pattern, okay? And there'll be a, a good like one inch gap in between that and the center split on there. Okay, and now we're gonna repeat that on the other side. So we're gonna take this point, holding in this box here, and we're gonna fold this corner down, and you kinda of have to roll it almost, until it hits that inside pattern paper, that beautiful pine pattern paper. Crease it down, and there we go. So now we've got an angled side that's still sticking up. Okay, now before we do anything else, we want this to look like a clutch, and a clutch does not look like a box. Um, it comes together at the top, right? It gets whoop, pinched together. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it in our hands like this, with fingers at the front and back, and our pointy fingers are free and available. And all we're going to do is we're going to push in at the ends, just at the top. See how I'm right up near the top? We're going to push in the ends, like so. And then we're just going to, i to make sure that front flap is in. We're just going to pinch together, okay? So you see how we're kind of making a triangular end on our... I've got the little flap stuck in the wrong spot. There we go. It's trying to grab onto everything. You gotta kind of play with it. This box is also not gonna have any glue on it, just so you know, just FYI. Now you could glue it if you wanted, uh, but I'm not going to. So you're gonna pinch, you're gonna push in the ends and you're gonna pinch them together and then you're just gonna kind of squeeze, just at the top. That's all you need to do because that card, that paper is gonna remember now then it needs to squish, just like that. And you can kind of massage it around a bit. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna take our top angled flap and we're just gonna fold it over. So make sure it comes together at the top, fold this over, and this one we're not gonna crease down hard. We're just gonna give it little pinches all the way along, just like that, so it's not a crisp, edge it's just a folded over edge and that will actually kind of hold everything together in that nice clutch purse shape but we want a little extra insurance on our clutch purse we don't want it to kind of pop open like that because not glued and we want to be able to trap something inside some sweets a little gift a nice little gift card maybe some chocolates and uh, tim's card or whatever we want to put in there you could put a scarf, you could put a pair of mittens, anything. And this would be kind of cute too if you wanted to do an advent calendar. You could make a whole bunch of these little boxes and number them. But what we want to do to close this up is we're going to bring in a belly band. And I've decided to use vellum for my belly band. And I have cut it to uh, 2 inches by 9 inches. Okay. And I'm going to take some double-sided adhesive and I'm going to put a strip right on the end of my vellum on this side. And then I'm going to flip my vellum over and I'm going to add a strip of adhesive at this end. Just like that, right on the end. And this is just quarter inch adhesive. I'm going to remove the adhesive backings on both sides and then we're going to make sure our box is all squished together we're going to take our vellum and starting at the back so I always look at it with this flap on the front we're going to take it and we're going to wrap this around like that and kind of get it close to the center where that adhesive is make sure the first one that you fold over has the adhesive facing you. <laughs> so you're not sticking it to the box. The adhesive is up. And if you'll notice, the two inches is pretty much the width of this flat part of the front flap. So that's good to know. And then you just wrap this all the way around and don't do it too tightly. You want to be able to take off and reposition and re-put on this belly band 
So just get it on there, leave a little bit of space. It's, I always think of a belly band like a belt, okay? And if you're going to go out to a party and bring a gift and you're going to be eating lovely food, you probably don't want to be wearing your tightest belt because <laughs> what do they call it? buffet pants. So leave a little bit of space so that you can easily take it off and put it back on when you want to add your gift. And then when the recipient wants to take their gift out, and maybe they'll reuse it as well because it's so pretty, right? We need it to have more than one use. So let's now do some, um, some decorating on here. One of the troubles with vellum is that you can see where adhesive lands on it. So we're going to cover up this adhesive. That's why we've put it on the front. You could put it on the bottom, but I think it's nicer to put it here on the front where we're going to be doing some embellishing anyway. So this is where I have told you I was going to be using the Holiday Banner stamp set. And there's some beautiful sentiments on here. There's lovely banner, some poinsettias, holly, berries, little sprigs. So we've got Happy Mail, Merry Christmas, um, Happy Season, Tis the Season, Believe, Joy to the World, Holidays, lots of little things, a little extra berries there. And so we're going to be doing some stamping with this. So let's bring in some cardstock. First, let's stamp out the banner. So for the banner, I've got some White Daisy cardstock. And I'm going to start out with my Candy Apple ink. It's a nice, lovely red color that coordinates with this collection. And I got my banner stamp loaded up on my ink, on my stamp block. Gonna get it all inky in the Candy Apple. And go ahead and stamp that right on there like that. And then we're going to add our sentiment. And I'm gonna do Joy to the World because I think that's a lovely sentiment. And I'm going to be using the new Jade ink, which is also one of the coordinating colors. I've got Joy 2 on this one. Ink it up. Stamp that right there on the top of the banner. And then I've got The World on this second one. Ink it up. Stamp that out. Lovely. And then we can do some fussy cutting because, you know, that's how we roll. We're going to do a rough cut first. I always keep um, any of these little off cuts of white daisy cardstock in my drawer beside me here so that anytime I need to do a little bit of stamping, I can just reach in, grab a little piece, and it's always handy. The only colors of cardstock that are in there are black and white. And because those are the ones that you most often reach for when you want just a little bit to do some heat embossing or some stamping. So I'm just going to go ahead and fussy cut this all the way around. Now this stamp set was available with thin cuts as well. I don't know if the thin cuts are still available. But they're not hard to cut around. So I didn't bother with the thin cuts. I always figure if I can cut it... <laughs> I can save my money and buy more stamps. So there, we've got our joy to the world. Then I also want to use that lovely big poinsettia on there because it's such a gorgeous one. I don't want to have to color it though. So I thought that I would use some colored cardstock to stamp this out. And I'm gonna do it with white heat embossing. So I'm gonna use my anti-static pouch just to give that a wipe. And the reason we use that anti-static pouch is because embossing powder is basically plastic dust. And if you have ever done anything with plastic, you know that it sticks to everything. It sure does. And it is super not fun to get off of everything. It just sticks to you all over the place. So the best thing to do is use the anti-static pouch and then it will only stick where you want it to stick. So I'm going to use my Versamark ink for this. And Versamark is actually a retired Close to My Heart product, so we don't have that anymore. But um, it's easily available. You can also do this with the White Daisy ink. I thought about doing that, but then I decided not to. So I'm going to stamp one poinsettia on the candy apple. 
and one poinsettia on the jade ink that's that new color this year i've got my white embossing powder and i'm just gonna sprinkle that on tap tap you don't want to be too vicious when you've done uh, embossing powder because you do want most of it to stay tap tap there we go and then we can use our scrap paper that we've got under here just to funnel that back into the container like so and then I also want to stamp a couple little extra bits so on the red here while we've got it working I'm going to get out of the stamp set the little cluster of berries here. Just going to take that gently off and get myself a stamp block. There's our little berries. Bring back in that Versamark ink. Stamp, stamp. Stamp our berries on there. We can add our embossing powder tap tap there we go and then on the green i'm also going to stamp out a couple of holly leaves let me just set that aside grab that let's grab the little hollies okay Ink, ink, ink. I like to use up the space as much as I can, so I tuck things in little corners. <laughs> don't like to waste my lovely cardstock. I like to use it, don't like to waste it. There we go. And dump that back in there. Who likes the look of heat embossing? And if you like the look of heat embossing, have you tried heat embossing? I certainly do. I think it looks nice and crisp. So if you look at it before we heat emboss it, um, it's very dull and powdery looking. And then we bring in our heat tool. Let's get it warmed up a smidge. And uh, this is the Ranger heated craft tool. We used to carry these. I think they're retired now, but you can certainly get them at the craft store or online. And we're just going to go ahead and hold this. Now, I like to hold my paper up off my work surface to do this. I know some people just leave it sitting down. Um, you have to make sure that your work surface is heat safe, you know, so the finish on your table and all those things. Um, but the other thing is, is that the hot air will swirl around your paper if you hold it up in the air, and it actually makes it work faster. So there we go. And sometimes you can bake it on both sides just to make sure. So now you can see that that's got a nice little shine to it and has gotten brighter. I don't know if you can see. Let me just compare the two. So the green hasn't been embossed yet. And the red is nice and shiny and has been embossed. So let's go ahead and do the green as well. This is the new jade. I stamped really close to the edge with that point set. I can see I'll have to be careful when I'm fussy cutting. So can you think of different things that you would do with that uh, clutch purse idea? That little clutch gift box. I think it would be super cute for a ladies night out. You could put all sorts of little treats in there. It'd be great for a bachelorette party. It could be um, fun for um, little goodie bags for a kids party even. Yes, Laura, that heat gun is really quiet. That's the Ranger Heat It Craft Tool. And if you've ever had one of the ones that are like the long, the long cylinders, you know they have like a good hum to them. But that one is really quiet, um, which I like. And it also has like a lower fan speed, so it's not, not blowing your embossing powder everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so Joanne says she likes heat embossing, but doesn't use it often enough. Ooh. 
ooh, something to put on the the must-do list. I think it looks especially nice with sort of festive things. Um, so Christmas time is a good time to get out, even like the silver and gold heat embossing. A lot of people are really into foiling right now, but you can get a, a nice look too with the heat embossing. And then I'm just going to fussy cut around this. I'm not cutting right on the edge of my heat embossing. I'm leaving a little halo of the cardstock, pivoting my paper, and just working my way around. Fussy cutting is one of those things that it just takes practice. You just got to be confident and give it a go. The hardest part that I find people have is they say the edges don't look smooth. Like they look jaggedy. And so I find the trick with that is I don't go right to the point of my scissors. If you go right to the point of your scissors, you tend to get like a little snip mark. So let me show you here. So if I was cutting and I was going to the point of my scissors, then I had to pick up and then I had to go again and I went to the point of my scissors and then I picked up and I went again. If I don't line it up quite right, you're going to get like the jaggedy feel. But if you start closest to where the join of the scissors is, and you go about two thirds of the way down your scissors, and then just kind of, you're not even pulling your scissors away from it, you're just kind of sliding your scissors up that cut, and then continue cutting. And so it's kind of like drawing the drawing method where you draw without ever lifting your scissors. I did that run really bad. We'll go back and fix that. Um, my hand's gone numb. <laughs> and if you've ever done that drawing technique where you draw without ever lifting your scissor, you're lifting your pencil, it creates a different kind of look than if you do sort of sketchy motions. And um, so as long as you just kind of slide your scissors on that cut mark, creates a nice smooth cut now my because my fingers went numb I kind of got a little crazy going around the corners here so we just go back and fix it as long as you leave a little halo around the edge of your image then you don't have to worry about going back and fixing anything because there's still room to fix stuff so let's do this other point set I'm going to give my hand a shake I've got carpal tunnel so <laughs> when you hold on to thin things like paper your hands go numb. So go around and then just slide up. I think between that sliding technique and the pivoting of the paper, those are the two things that give you the nice clean look. And having sharp scissors. Sharp scissors help. These are the non-stick micro tip scissors and they're the bestest scissors for, well, for anything. And <laughs> getting rid of my excess paper there. The other thing is you can cut through your adhesive and then come right back to fussy cutting and it doesn't affect it at all, which is a lovely. So let's finish up here going around. All the way. I know I ask this a lot, but are you a fussy cutter? Do you like fussy cutting? Or is it one of those things that you're like, I will avoid it at all costs? <laughs> hey, Michelle from work. Hope you're having a good day. Hope work isn't too awful. <laughs> Sometimes work can be okay. Sometimes work is work. My husband, when he first started working where he is now, we actually nicknamed his work Candyland because he enjoyed it so much. <laughs> he still does enjoy it, which is good. It's nice to enjoy what you do. And hopefully the people you work with. All right, so the last little holly. Ooh, I got a little close there. There we go. The hardest thing to fussy cut is a circle. Everything else is okay, but the hardest thing is a circle. So I use thin cuts for circles. Yes, that new jade color, isn't it a nice green color? It really has a nice little pop to it. Okay, let's bring in our project here now because this is 
got an angle. I'm going to stick my Versamark ink under there so I can kind of prop it up and take a look. So for our little poinsettias, we're actually going to layer these up because poinsettias, it's all leaves. Did you know that? Poinsettias are just leaves. There's no traditional flower per se. So I'm just going to run my fingers down all of the leaves of the poinsettia and just kind of curve them like they have a little bit of a curve to them. And then I'm going to take a piece of 3D foam tape like that, just a little square, and I'm going to put it right in the center of that green one. Take that off. And then the easiest thing is to line up where they match. So let me see, where's the, where's, there we go. There's always one point. And so this little leaf kind of points off to the right. And so does this one. So the easiest thing is to line it up and then just give it a little twist like that and then stick it together. And there we've created our little poinsettia. And then let's, why not add another, do we want, maybe we're just gonna stick it down. We're going to add some adhesive to this, and I want it to kind of be here. So I'm going to add some adhesive just along these three leaves. And stick that down like that. Lovely. Okay. And then we've got our joy to the world. And we're gonna stick that on there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of, that's not gonna, it's not working very well. You know what I need? I need some grip. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of 3D foam tape just in the center of my banner. Just straight down the center like that because I'm gonna be tucking those holly berries in as well. So we're going to stick that on there and we're kind of concentrating on covering up that seam where the, um, where the vellum overlaps. Okay. So we've got that on there and then let's tuck in our little hollies. So add a little bit of tape to the base of each of these. Like so, peel that off, stick one up here, and that takes care of that last little bit of the vellum fold, and one down here, like that, and then our little berries, and we'll have to use some liquid glue for this, and I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue on just the stem of these berries. Just a little touch. And we can tuck those right in there like that in the middle. And I think I actually want a little bit more foam tape under that banner because it's tipping. Tipping to the side. Let me see if I can do this. We will see. I'm just going to tuck it under this corner here like so. Feel the backing off. Let's use a pokey tool to try and peel the backing off. It's hard. It's always hard to do it after the fact. So much easier to get the foam tape on there in the first place. There we go. Tweezers would work too. There. Look at that. So pretty. So we've created our little clutch gift box. And this is a pretty good size. The bottom is two inches by six inches. And then the, um, the, the height is three inches. So you've got a nice amount of space. We've got that beautiful belly band that can just slide right off and set to the side. Now we didn't really crease any of the edges. So um, if you don't like the fact that it falls over like that when you take it off, you can crease the edges a little bit. But then we've got all this space inside to add whatever you would like. 
using that beautiful paper from the Home for Christmas collection with that gorgeous plaid on the outside. We're going to stick our belly band back on. It's always easier to do it from the end. Do, do. Like that. Making sure that we get our decoration the right way around. Like so. In the center. And you can, if you want, just give it a little pinch on all three of the sides so that it has a memory of how to go back on again. Just a little pinch. Don't crease it too hard. And there we go. How fun is that? Ready to be filled up with all sorts of good and lovely things. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this little gift box come together. And we will see you again soon. Be, we will be on at 11.30 for Chapman Craft this afternoon. All right. Toodaloo. Bye.